Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And after I did a video the other day discussing how to use weightlifting to increase your vertical leap, a couple of people actually asked me what sort of weightlifting would I advise to improve their punching power. Now, I want to state up front that weight training is no substitute for actually training in your sport. If you're a boxer, or you're a martial artist, or you compete in MMA or kickboxing, or whatever it is that you do, Getting stronger and faster is going to make you better at throwing the punch, but it's not going to teach you how to punch. What we're looking for is an edge over an opponent because, as even Bruce Lee said, when two fighters square off in a fight, if their skill levels are roughly equal, the stronger one will usually win. And that's generally true. On a punch, if you can punch twice as fast and twice as hard with the same level of technique and proficiency, it's going to hurt a hell of a lot more on the end of the punch. So, let's break down what we need for weight training on that. Now, we could make a case for people using the big three, squat, bench, deadlift, getting strong on all of those to improve your punch, but that's true of any sport. But what we're looking for is an edge because everyone who does some form of contact sport is going to do some weightlifting. So what we need is to try to get that 1% edge over what they're doing. So we need to break down the punch itself. Obviously we need to work on power and speed strength and we need to work on starting strength. And we need to work on using your full body explosively because even on a short punch, if you're not getting hip drive, leg drive, your core and everything involved, you're simply not hitting as hard as you possibly can. Which should always be your goal when a punch contacts Irrespective of what style of fighting you do, you need to connect with as much speed and power on the end as possible. So obviously you're going to want to do some basic things. I would like to see two basic movements always done for someone who needs to punch. And that's going to be the squat and some sort of clean, whether it's a hang clean or a power clean. I don't care. You need to develop full body power. But when it comes to the actual muscles involved in a punch and making those work, we need to work on speed strength and we need to work on starting strength and bringing it all together. So, for speed strength, what we could make the argument for doing speed work at bands and all of that, but a lot of people don't have access to that. What I would look at is we need to look at, for most people when they punch, a normal bench press or even a dip isn't useful because you're not punching with your arms out wide, out to here, and you're usually not at a flat 90 degree angle from the body. Usually when you punch, you connect on the end of a punch, you're at a slight incline. So flat bench and dip isn't ideal. Now it's going to build those muscles up and make them stronger, but it's not giving you optimal power through the path that you're using. What you need to do is video yourself punching or watch in the mirror, have someone watching. You need to find the angle of incline that you connect with on the end of a punch. You need to do some incline benching at that angle. Again, specificity of training. Also, when you punch, your, your arms aren't way out here on the end usually, unless you're way over extending the shoulder, and some boxers do that. Martial artist isn't going to do that. But generally, a closed grip is going to work better. So I'm going to recommend a closed grip incline and do things like your density training. And that's when I've pointed out stuff like doing the 10 by 3 with 30 seconds between and doing each rep as explosively as you can. Doing a closed grip incline with 10 by 3 with 30 seconds between is a valuable tool for improving power through the plane of motion that you're going to punch with. Now as far as getting the whole body involved and getting starting strength to get the start of your punch going from in close to the body when you need all that power and speed to develop, we can do that with one movement. So if we want to be efficient about it, this is where something like a one arm dumbbell floor press. And when I mean one arm, don't use one dumbbell at a time. I want one dumbbell only involved to where you're having to stabilize it. And the reason is that it gets a lot of the muscles of the core and the rotational muscles in the trunk involved in stabilizing that. From a dead stop on the floor, you're having to overcome all of the weight at once from a dead stop at the bottom and involve the stabilizers in the core and rotational muscles there all at the same time. So again, something like that three sets of five or even three sets of three on something like that will give you overall starting power and give you more stability on a punch. So those would be my two go-to movements for just increasing a punch outside of your all of your normal training. Those would be additions I would throw in for someone who needs more speed and power on a punch. 
So to break it down, obvious use of the big three is perfectly fine, or even replacing bench press with dips. But in addition to all of that, I would like to see some sort of power clean or hang clean for more explosiveness. I would like to see an incline close grip bench press for density training. And I would like to see some general strength and power work with the one arm dumbbell floor press. And that's personally what I would recommend someone go about with working with a routine if they want to improve their overall punching speed and power. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go.